Well, Tim mentioned uh, the uh, the handbell tuners, and they were uh, they used those a lot on the higher end mandolins, mandocellos, and later on they uh, they became very hard to attain after World War One. Uh, the handbell company I found out recently also made Tiffany glass, stained glass, and art glass, and uh, was a uh, a casualty of war, I'm afraid, but uh, by 1919 uh, we were using uh, what we called onyx ivory buttons, which you see on this mandolin. This is an A4, uh, was the top of the line A model mandolin, and uh, it's got this little twin over there with handbell tuners. And uh, again, a, a totally original mandolin, except for uh, I put an adjustable bridge on it, this mandolin, because it. Uh, uh, is a player mandolin. I take it out on, uh, and play it at gigs, and uh, uh, it's just a great little axe. Records very, very well, and uh, it looks uh, just like Tim's collection, and you can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what I've got here, this is, uh, if a clown were to play guitar, this is what a clown would play. It's on my clown guitar. This is the, uh, this is, uh, the most expensive guitar that uh, Gibson had at that time, it's a 1919, uh, and um, you can see from the scroll that they thought of it as a mandolin. In other words, it looks just like that F4 mandolin I was just playing. Uh, one of the earliest cutaway guitars, you know, that we know about. I wouldn't wouldn't claim that Gibson invented that, but it uh, it is a cutaway. Once again, birch back and sides, uh, very nice piece of one uh, one piece birch back on this on this instrument, and. Uh, we're going to play um, a Django Reinhardt thing, is that right? Yes. yes. Um, Actually, Sweet Sue. Sweet Sue, yeah. And this is a, you know, one of those uh, standard pieces from probably the 30s. Um, string swing was very popular, and uh, there weren't a lot of swing mandolin players back then, but you heard a lot of swing guitar and swing fiddle. And uh, there were a couple of guys around playing some jazz back then. One fellow named Dave Aplon early on in the 1920s. And, um, he was actually friends with Django Reinhardt, who was a gypsy guitar player. If you haven't heard him, you need to. Uh, you can probably hear some of the catches of what he did on a lot of commercial uh, television spots. Now, when you hear that driving rhythm like Tim's about to display for you, you'll see, uh, you'll see hey, that kind of sounds familiar. So that's where that, all that comes from. It's called Sweet Sue. <laughs> 